Now then, in my, in my first uh, episode, we were talking about how to establish good politics and gain alignment. And this fundamentally boils down to managing relationships. Um, and I introduced a couple of tools, um, one which is proprietary and it talks about the expectations gap, really. And the idea is that if we close the gap in expectations between two people, then you're going to get more alignment. And I specifically focus on making those expectations explicit, so that means writing them down and people being able to see them, um, but also focusing on the how the relationship is conducted, because quite often a lot of the snags that we um, catch ourselves on is not because of what we're supposed to be doing, but how we're doing it. Um, and that uh, drives communication and action. Now, the complicating factor in this is that we're having to deal with people, and people have emotions. And uh, our emotions uh, um, drive our emotion, um, behavior and attitude towards other people. And I introduced this uh, idea of ego, really. Our self-perception and awareness, and our awareness and perception of other people, actually um, is discontinuous, insofar as that we have different ideas. And as a consequence, that causes friction, or in other words, politics, right? So if you're in an organization having to work with other people, this actually is probably going to be one of the biggest things that you're going to have to deal with. Your own ego, my ego, and everybody else's ego, right? <coughs> and uh, uh, I use this OK Corral. Um, it's a, a technique which was uh, created in the 70s to help uh, explain this. And so far as that when everybody agrees with each other that they're in the OK space, then the amount of politics and friction you're going to go and get is less. So um, the second um, episode, um, how to free time and become more strategic, which is another common complaint we have, I introduced the idea of a strategy on a page, but applied at the personal level. So we have our own personal mission and vision and purpose, effectively, and the, the principles by which we work. And the key to that is defining what are the outcomes we're trying to achieve and deliver, and assigning across our work week the number of hours we need to do to, in order to accomplish that. So we need to uh, understand the kind of activities that are going to deliver those outcomes so that we can quantify the amount of time necessary to deliver. Uh, it's a it's an iterative process, right? So, effectively, what you do is you do timesheets, but a simplistic approach to timesheets. You're not kind of doing war and peace on how you did a toilet break or anything like that, but it's saying, okay, well, if I've got four outcomes or four objectives, how much time did I spend working towards those individual outcomes? And you track them, you see. So this is quite a simple timesheet at the end of the day. You uh, look at it on a weekly basis, then you can start to track your performance and whether you're working towards your outcomes or not, or whether you need to rebalance the amount of time you spend. So once you've got a good idea of what you've been doing in the past, you then have an idea on how you need to spend time in the future. So that means looking at the amount of time you spend in meetings, which meetings you go to, do those meetings contribute to those outcomes or not, so you're able to plan more effectively and work in the future. Uh, and one point I didn't make in that uh, um, episode was uh, really actually res reserving time in advance to work towards those outcomes and blocking it out so somebody in your, who's got a view of your calendar can snap it up and uh, work towards their objectives. Okay, so that was time management. Uh, in the third episode, I spoke about how to resolve conflicts and this is where I introduced the idea of a value proposition. Now, we all know what a value proposition is. It's an elevator pitch. However, I believe it's fundamentally crucial that we think in terms of what, who, the benefits, how we're supposed to deliver it, and what is the measure, the KPI, we're going to use to demonstrate we've been successful or not. And quite often people have these kind of esoteric conversations about what value is, well, the simple fact of the matter is it can be anything you want. However, we're not clear enough on defining it in the first instance, which obviously leads to the abuse of the word value. 
So I suggest that having a value proposition using these five elements is the minimum viable message to communicate value. Value is this. Now, where does this come to in helping us resolve conflicts? Well, um, we all know how to kind of define a benefit and we all know how to define an approach. So that's that's pretty simple uh, um, uh, subject. However, um, the, the problem when we're trying to get, quote unquote, this idea of alignment with other people is that we spend a lot of our time arguing about what the benefit is and what we should be doing. Um, and that is actually a symptom of not having sufficient clarity around what the actual situation awareness is. There are some assumptions or unknown unknowns uh, that need to be exposed and clarified. In addition, we may have different principles um, and beliefs and values on uh, our work. You know, why are we doing this? What's our purpose? And quite often there's uh, different agendas at the table which haven't been clearly understood and as a consequence whilst they're not explicit, cause a lot of discussion, debate and arguments around the benefits and the how of whatever our value proposition is. So my suggestion was really spend more time here to get better clarity in order to arrive at a solution far quicker about what the benefit is and how we're going to deliver it. <coughs> so, my last episode was talking about how to align people with your value proposition. Uh, and really this is the, using the tool which I call the alignment template and it breaks out basically the how of the value proposition into two things which is the outcome and the activity. So the benefit is what's perceived as uh, satisfying a, personal's, a person's emotional perspective, making them happy or sad fundamentally uh, and the outcome is a kind of a physical manifestation or a digital manifestation that demonstrates that uh, by proxy we've achieved that uh, state. Now, um, uh, with uh, strategy on the page I alluded to another technique which is OKRs, which is objectives and key results, and really the only difference between uh, strategy on the page and objectives and key results was the fact that I include activities. Whilst I uh, understand that objectives and key results doesn't necessarily prescribe activities, it's useful to know because we need to understand the cause and effect between what we're doing and the outcome of those activities. And I think that's fundamentally important. So whilst I, as the line manager, am not going to prescribe on how somebody is going to deliver those results, I'm at least interested and uh, I would expect that there can be a debate on ass uh, assessing the efficacy of those activities. Right? So I include activities. And what I'm looking for is a cause and effect, a link between um, outcomes and activities. And the thing is, within an organisation, we inevitably have a hierarchy that needs to be um, uh, uh, acknowledged. And quite often, let's uh, assume at the top is the customer. We have a corporate who mandate uh, strategies and direction and everything else and functions interpret that into their own silo approach, which obviously is an issue, and then that kind of cascades down to team and then yourself, you see. So what we're wanting to demonstrate is a cause and effect in terms of the KPIs you measure for yourself, the team, the function and everybody else, so that we can see a link and a set of alignment across the whole organisation. So if we use this alignment template, we develop a value proposition and we have the uh, commensurate uh, KPIs associated with them, then we can demonstrate to people how an individual set of activities works all the way to the final outcome of uh, satisfying those needs that the customer has. So that's a, a brief summary, really, of the four um, uh, previous episodes, which fundamentally talk about alignment from different perspectives, relationships, value propositions, alignment templates, and indeed personal time management.